and this is The In Show. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. It's good to be back with you today. we got another great show. That's right. We are broadcasting live from the Sunset Strip in the entertainment capital of the world, Hollywood. And we have a great in-studio guest, Mr. Wesley Yor. Wesley, how's everything? Everything's great. I'm at Palm Springs, and it's 80 degrees here. Uh, unbelievable. You know, I was in Milwaukee recently. I, I, I just sold a TV development deal for a new TV series. And we were filming the week before Christmas. We had a production crew there. And, I had, and they, they had not had snow like that, I think, in 20 years. And it was, you know, it was, I thought, okay, okay, I get to go home to Palm Springs. I'm happy. <laughs> and, and Palm Springs is usually one of those cities that is the envy of, you know, all the United States during winter. But here, it's... It's incredible, you know. The, the entire what uh, our entire uh, southern uh, co uh, you know Southern California seems to be in a great summer weather. I can't believe it. It's incredible. Yeah, it, it, it's a, it is it's, it is amazing. And for and people that are listening to us that are not in California, yeah. are probably going, "Oh, shut up! Why you just <laughs> shut up?" <laughs> 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 is, isn't that the truth? I, I saw um, uh, a meme just recently, and it showed. You know, all the United States, and everyone, different parts, East Coast, you know, uh, South, North, all having these sayings that saying, oh, it's cold, it's brutally cold, oh, it's really cold. And in California, it was just LOL, because we're just laughing at them. <laughs> I thought that was, <laughs> that's fantastic, fantastic. Well, look at that, we, we, we started the show with a pleasant conversation about the weather. Wow. <laughs> You know, that, that means we're getting old. <laughs> That's right. God, how's your health? Nice, nice. <laughs> so now, now that we know that we both know how to have a conversation with, uh, you know, with people, how's the weather? How's health? <laughs> well, let's, well, let's get into the real conversation, Wesley. And you've had okay. a, a wonderful career. I think so many people know you from of course i remember you from uh, the land of the lost of course and you know but you've done so much behind the scenes you're a writer you've developed a, a children's uh cartoon dragon tales i think everyone remembers that and knows that but that's still running along right now well dragon tales it just finished the nine-year run on pbs and uh i mean it's all over the world there's, there's dragon's tales live shows and and books and you know costumes and all sorts of all sorts of things. That was an incredible show. For, for people that didn't see it, it was for, it's an animated show for two to five year olds. And it was produced by uh, Children's Television Workshop, which is Sesame Street and Sony Pictures. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. You know, and, and you, you know what they, they call me? The guy that produced it was the executive producer. His son, I'd written children's books, and his son had read one of my books called The Red Wings of Christmas, and it was his favorite book. And I had worked with this guy as a producer before. I used to produce Totally Hidden Video for Fox. The hidden camera show where everybody was very nasty. And so, and, and anyway, they called me and said, we, We've got these dragon drawings. You've got to come see them. Can you create a show around these dragon drawings? And we wrote the show in three days and uh, it sold in a week to PBS. Fantastic. Fantastic. What, what, what a wonderful story. You know, that you, here you are, you, you've been in Hollywood and you are constantly working and success always at your door that's fantastic how's that you know what what's that feel for you you know these now that uh, you know you've, you've been in hollywood for this uh, amount of time you know it's it, I, I have a really nice life I have, I have a lot of great friends and i kind of retired for a while i was producing fundraisers mostly raising money for for aids and for uh, battered women and breast cancer we used to produce huge huge celebrity fundraisers in palm springs 85 different performers and um, and finally, I started just started creating some other shows, and I just have I just recently signed two development deals for two new TV shows, and uh, one we were just in Milwaukee about, and um, with, the, with the world's number one sports authenticator in the world, and it's going to be an extraordinary show. This guy that authenticates million dollar items. It's we're calling it the million dollar authenticator, and it's it's Babe Ruth ball and um, bats and. Oh my God! Teddy Roosevelt glasses. And Elvis Presley uh, uniforms. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Oh, amazing, amazing! 
and definitely want to get into that. But I want to ask you a, a couple questions about what got you into the industry to begin with. I think that's everybody's <laughs> you know, main I, reason. You know, you know, I, I, was, I, I was raised in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and my dad left when, when I was two years old and never came back. Wow. And, we're, and we're talking, he was, he was a college professor, and this wasn't, a sort of, this wasn't like a, a derelict. But he never came back. And, and I think that uh, living in Mississippi with all these women and stuff, I just thought I was getting lost. I, I'm sure that, I mean, to be really honest, a little pop psychology. I just needed attention, so I, I gravitated towards the acting field, and I always wanted to be an actor Ever since I was five years old. I said, I'm going to be an actor, and I found my way to New York and um, worked, you know, worked there, and then I went to L.A. and got a couple of TV series, um, you know, Dates Our Lives and Land of the Lost, got on the air, another show I, I did called The Organic Vegetables, produced by the Monkees producers, and I was the lead singer in a band of the waiters and waitresses at Organic Vegetables uh, restaurant that was run by Kay Ballard. So, and then, you know, I hosted game shows for Nickelodeon, and I've had, I've had, a, nice, I've had a nice run. Yeah, absolutely, and the run is still going. So, w when when you were five, was there a, a TV show? Was there a, a local theater house that you went to that that gave you the yeah, acting bug? I was in grade school. I played, they, my first job was the Oak Tree. Nice. <laughs> I, I was I was a great Oak Tree. A little short, I might. I was more of a sapling. I think. <laughs> but, uh, I remember. I can remember the stage and everything. I really was the Oak Tree standing there. Well, I, you know, in, in high school and stuff, and, and junior high, I always was in the theater department, always doing shows, and it's just what I wanted to do. I just knew. And then, then I started doing, when I, I remember when I was like 15, in Illinois, we moved to Illinois, Granite City, Illinois, across from St. Louis, and I, I auditioned for a part to play an adult, a 25, 26-year-old part, opposite the district attorney's wife at the time as her, as her boyfriend, <laughs> and I got the part. It was crazy. I mean, everybody's going, "What? Are you crazy?" But I guess I pulled it off. I mean, I, it was, it was, it, it was, it was crazy. It was just crazy. Then I'm 15 years old. I've got the district attorney's wife, who's very pretty, and I'm playing her boyfriend, and people are buying it. That's amazing. Well, that that just speaks for itself about your quality of acting. Either that or it speaks, it speaks for the lack of entertainment in the community. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, it, I, I tend to go towards the latter. <laughs> 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 very nice, very, a, a humble view of yourself. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, and you know, Land of the Lost. I played Will Marshall, and, and we we celebrate the 40th anniversary of Land of the Lost this year. That's fantastic. Years ago. I, <laughs> I am so old. Well, I'm I'm with you because I remember watching it. So it, it was you know, one. We, we had we had a reunion this this year. Uh, a guy in Milwaukee who eventually was the show we're creating the show around he put together a reunion tour he got Kathy Coleman who played Holly and he got Phil Paley who played Chaka I love Chaka person, and myself we flew to Milwaukee to try to find the guy that played my dad who was Spencer Milliken who played Rick Marshall yeah and Spencer's like a recluse and living a great life in a beautiful home and we took a film crew and knocked on his door nice and what happened so uh, what was he there uh, well, it's actually they're doing a film, of, uh, you know, a documentary on it, and you will see it has a lot of fun twists and turns. Really? But, but it was great to see them, and hopefully we're, you know, I don't normally do art or signings and stuff, but this year I think we're going to go go to Dragon Con, I, I, I know, and then uh, like maybe a couple of them are trying to get everybody together to just get together and go tie autographs or, you know, just celebrate the 40th anniversary. Right, right. I, mean, I remember that show. It was an immensely popular show. I think everyone knew the song, you know, when when it start when it's the show started well, off. I, I sang that song. That was me singing it. Really? That was you? <laughs> yep. My show will be <laughs> on, on a routine, routine expedition. expedition. <laughs> the greatest earthquake ever known. <laughs> High on the rapids, just swept their tiny rock. <laughs> 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 and them down a thousand feet below to the land of lost, 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 lost. 
Fantastic. I was at Stanley's, uh, um, has a, in Los Angeles, had a, a big show recently, and they had a kamikaze time. Yeah. And we were there, and we had crowds of people that were just singing the theme song. It was so much fun. <laughs> you, it is, you know, the, you know, looking back on it, you know, you you look at the show and and you, and you still get fascinated by it. You can see what captured you when, uh, at least for me, you know, what captured my attention when when I was watching it. I mean, well, but, you know, the, the thing about Land of the Lost was it was written by the Star Trek writers, David Jones, who wrote uh, the famous Star Trek episode called Trouble with Tribbles. Yeah, was the head writer. Ah, okay. And Walter Koenig created the character of Enoch. Walter, of course, was the actor on. on and there were all these uh, Dorothy Fontana, different, different major, major Star Trek writers. Because when the Crocs developed the show, it wasn't going to be sci fi, it was going to be more like a Swiss Stanley Robinson kind of show. Okay. And, and suddenly they bring on the sci fi writers, and David Gerald turned it into this extraordinary, you know, sci fi. And so that's why some of the scripts, a lot of them still hold up. Cause, and, and we're getting, it's, it's now airing on Me TV. And it's, it was airing on KC. I think it may still be every Saturday and Sunday at 10 o'clock in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Um, but it's getting a whole new gener- generation of, of followers. And I, I know the special effects look as hokey as hell because there's no, you know, there's no CG back then. It, everything was live and puppets and stop playing animation and green screen. Yes. When you watch it, you go, really? Come on, come on. <laughs> but when you look at the storylines, some of them are extraordinary. Time doorways and time differentials and, you know, outer space and pylons with crystals and things, it, it's some really extraordinary stories. And the Papuni, the, the, the Chaka, the, the monkey people had a language that was written specially, I mean, it's a real language that you can go find dictionaries of it, that they created, uh, a woman at UCLA created. And so they, they went to great pains to make it a great sci-fi show. You know, right now, I think that, I think you hit it right on the head. You know, a lot of those shows, like Star Trek and uh, that, they worked hard at I think that's what made the original Star Wars so great because they worked hard at it because there was no real CH, uh, C- CGI back then and I think that's what exactly what you're saying that's what made these stories visually so appealing exactly I mean you can look at the old Star Trek the original ones which I love yes um, you know the, you can kind of giggle at the at some of the low tech high tech stuff <laughs> but when you still look at the storyline Yes. It was groundbreaking. Yes. And with Land of Lost, they, they didn't talk down to the kids. They, right. They, they, they presented an interesting topic, scientific topics for the kids to look at and explore. And, and I think that that's what fascinated the kids. And of course, the sleep sack scared the bejesus out of everybody. <laughs> and, uh, right. and I, I, said, I, I was with Sid and Marty Croft not too long ago, and they said that when the, the, the sleep sack, the first episode of the sleep sack aired, Remember, they were tall, green lizard creatures. Yes. And he said that the ratings went crazy. Wow. Wow. Because a, 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 a touch of the imagination, something that could possibly uh, be real. Oop. Oh, it looks like we uh, lost uh, Wesley real quick. Uh, we'll get him back. Well, matter of fact, we'll continue that conversation because I was going to take a quick commercial break. Hey, well, this is Gus Summers, and you are listening to The In Show. We have in-studio guest, Mr. Wesley Yor. He's been calling in and giving us some great background in his early years, and we're going to have more of him in our next segment. So you hang in there. We'll be right back. And this is The In Show. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. Good to be back with you today. That's right. We are broadcasting live from our studios on the Sunset Strip in the entertainment capital of the world, Hollywood. And we have a great in-studio guest, Mr. Wesley Yor. Wesley, fantastic stories. It, it's great when you have someone who knows Hollywood, who's been in Hollywood, and he continues to have a successful career in Hollywood, who is willing to share their insight, their experience. You know, I love your stories. You know, thank you for doing that because I know so many people like to know what's going on today, but especially love to know what happened, you know, yesteryear. You know, Gus, I did the Sally Jesse show, uh, obviously years back, which obviously was just on the air. Right. And it was one of those, where are they now, child stars. And of course, I was kind of, I, was, I wasn't really a child star, because I, I, I was older, but I kind of pushed in that category for that episode. And I had a new book coming out, The Red Wings of Christmas. So I go on the show, and it's, you 
you know, it, there's some, some pretty famous child stars, and um, I think one of the girls, the girls from Age is Enough who ended up dying, and uh, a bunch of different people, like Jerry Mathers, and um, so everybody, but most of the people on the show were telling these stories about drug addiction and prostitution and, 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 and you know, falling by the wayside, and I'm the last guest out. And so I'm waiting to go on, and they go to commercial, and the producers come running back to and they go, Wesley, this is the most depressing show. You've got to be funny. <laughs> and I go, oh, okay, I'll be funny. And, you know, because everybody talked about going to prison and being arrested and all this <laughs> stuff. And so I come out, and Sally goes, so Wesley, how are you? And I go, Sally, I can't even get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And she's going to laugh me so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, I, I, I saw a lucky life. I mean, I, I, we just had a big reunion. A whole bunch of child stars just got together at a private house. Yes. It was uh, Lucy, Lucy Dreyer. Lucy was a child star who did a lot of shows. He was the son in uh, the Bob Newhart show played of the guy next door, the pilot, his son, and a bunch of shows. So like, so some of the kids from uh, Brady Brunch, Little House on the Prairie, uh, Tabitha was there from Bewitched, um, Land of the Lost. It was just a little private Together. And Robbie Rist was there. Robbie was on, you know, Brady Bunch played, but came up later and played the little, the, the little boy. Yeah, he's the one with the and glasses, Robbie, right? And Robbie, the which one? The one with the glasses, with the, with yeah, the, yeah, the little blonde hair, yeah. And so Robbie, was, we were talking, and Robbie, they gave, they were being silly, and they gave him a, uh, an award and stuff. And Robbie got up in front of everybody. It was just, I mean, it was probably maybe twenty of us, twenty five people, and at Lucy's backyard, in LA, and Robbie said, got really quiet and really serious and he said you know I gotta say something I look around this backyard and he said everybody here went through exactly the same thing that, that I did we all understand each other this is like he says like it's like a club that you know that nobody knows how difficult it was to be in this club and because you know most of the people you know this was this was a group of people actors and stuff who were still who hadn't gone through all the drugs and hadn't done hadn't, you know, fallen down like, you know, the Gary Coleman and, and all those kind of guys. Um, and he just said, he just said, I got to tell you, we got to stick together. He says, because nobody in the world would understand what we've been through. Because you can imagine child stars, you know, and I speak because I'm older, but, you know, and, you know, suddenly these little kids are on the air, they're making all this money, their families quit their jobs, you're now the breadwinner, everybody's telling this little, you know, eight-year-old kid, anything you want to do, do it, do it. And then one day it's over, it just stops series goes away, nobody wants you anymore, and everybody, and you're just sort of there by yourself, going, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, what, what, what happened here? And it's very hard to overcome. So it was, it was quite an afternoon that day at Lucy's house. Right. Did everyone kind of open up about their experiences and their feelings? Did, did that kind of take a little turn in that direction that night? No, I think everybody told them to shut up and then start laughing and moved on. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it was, it, you know, no, it was, cause it was really the party. It was, but he just took a real serious moment. Yeah. And, uh, uh Moosey was giving him an award jumping the shark moment. You know, okay. You know, that's fake song. That's when, when Fonzie. Yeah, jumped the shark, the shark sure. Days, that was the moment that, you know, the series was dead. Right. And Robbie Rist, and Robbie Rist on, uh, on the Brady Bunch. It was the jumping the shark moment. For Robbie Rist had been every show Robbie Rist had gone on, the show ended. <laughs> every time they put him on a show, it ended. So they gave him the jumping the shark because every time he came on the show, <laughs> you knew the show was over. <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's what he was known for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, I guess he could. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No, please. So it was, it was just a lot of fun. But uh, so he took it with good spirits. Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, we were all laughing and having so much fun. So, so now I have to ask, was the award uh, in the shape of a fin or a shark or something? You know, I forgot what, I forgot what Lucy built. He built some award. It was some, something really silly, but I don't remember being like a shark. <laughs> <laughs> it was something. <laughs> I'm sure he would have preferred a gift certificate, but that's another story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a nice little gold Rolex or what have you. Here's your moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I once, you know, Gus, I once optioned a, a play called Child Stars from Hell. Oh, no. It was written by a friend of mine in New Orleans, and, and he put it on in New Orleans. It was a big hit. It was a play. Yes. And it was about seven fictional child stars who all get together. They're all broke. They've had trash plans, but they all need group, they need therapy, and they can't afford it. So they get together in a church basement and have their own group therapy. So I thought, well, wouldn't that be fun to cast real child stars 
yes. fictional child stars. So at my house, we would have, oh, Brandon Cruz, of course, with Betty's father. We'd have, uh, oh, my God, uh, uh, Gary Coleman, uh, um, I don't know who, uh, um, uh, Johnny Whitaker, all these different, different child stars. And we would sit around my living room, and we, uh, uh, Paul Peterson, you know, and we, we'd sit around and read this play. And what you forgot was how good these actors were as kids and still as adults. What happened, they didn't get become bad actors, just that their look, or the, the, the world sort of passed them by. Right. And I, I remember looking around at one point, everybody was doing their lines, and we were reading, we read through the, the, the play once, and I just said, guys, i got to stop you. i just got to tell you. I forgot how good you are. This is amazing. I can't believe you're all in my living room. I used to watch you on TV and all the stuff. And, and Johnny Whitaker turned to me and said, the big red, you know, the redhead Johnny Whitaker from Sigma the Sea Monster. He goes, Wesley, we used to watch you on TV, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. I tried to make this a very important dramatic moment. <laughs> Nobody would have it. That's right. <laughs> That's great. What are you talking about? You're on the same boat. Stop it. I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right you know we're, we're just here in here in the now so I'm, I'm curious you know t- t- talking about um, yeah, an evening like that when during the, just like a, a casual meeting with you know some of your friends does it go always go back towards the business or is it just a friendship and you just talk you know sports and movies and whatever else uh, yeah it's just you know listen you know it, it's both it, it's both top shop top shop talk you know Look how terrible our lives are sometimes, or look how great. But, but, but mostly personal, mostly, you know, what's going on, and who, you know, what's happening in your life, and, you know, <laughs> did you pay your rent this month? I mean, but other than that, it's just great. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, you... You, you, you know, Paul, P- Paul Peterson started, who, who played, um, um, was on, on Father Knows Best, like yes. the boy, the son. He started a co- an organization called A Minor Consideration, and it was to rescue child stars. Um, because oh. I, I put so Paul started like must be 25 years ago yes. at least one child star a year was dying because these kids would you know they, they had all this money they lost it the parents stole it whatever they couldn't get work um, and so he started this organization that works with Screen Actors Guild and, and um, uh, you know uh, equity and all the different things that, that helped kids and, and so he, he began this organization he saved many a child star I know several personally that he has come to the rescue and given money and provided a home and other kind of help and it's quite extraordinary you know that that sounds like such a you know worthwhile organization you, 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 well, hit- you know the last thing I saw him on the news which is interesting when the Octomom was on all those eight kids yes nobody was talking about the eight kids you know, right. what's happening to them what's their life like are they, work, are they you know overusing these kids are they working them too hard and Paul stepped in and you know and said, okay, we need to have a talk here. And he took that situation over. I, saw, I think we saw CNN News talking about it. Really? Fantastic. So, we, so for, we forget that even reality shows have kids. Yes. Right. You know, years, years ago, it was called the Jackie, well, it still is, it's called the Jackie Coogan Law. And what it was was the parents, years ago, Jackie Coogan was, you know, won an Academy Award. He did, I think, uh, got the movie back in the 20s and 30s, the 40s, big star back then. Um, and... And his parents stole all this money. Kind of like Macaulay, Macaulay Culkin or Peter Coleman or one of those, those guys. And they passed a law that parents had to put the money aside into a bank account until they reached a certain age. Of course, it's easier said than done, but at least the law exists. Right. And that's where you hear a lot about some of these child actors who are trying to be emancipated from their parents so they can control their own finances and such. Exactly, exactly. Do you find that? Uh, as the thread in, in, in the industry, you know, the, in regards to children, that mismanagement of money and such, there's more often of that happening than, than proper management? You know, I, 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 I don't know that. I, mean, I, I know that there's some great laws in place now. It's a, it's a lot stricter. You know, the, the IRS and everything gets involved. But it sure happens more than you'd like to know. Right. So you, you think the laws have kind of kept up with uh, the industry and modern times, you know, in regards to that, in, in your opinion? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, you know, I, of course, it depends on the parents. 
depends. I mean, it's, you know, it's easy for a parent to steal from a child. Right. So if they really want to, there's, there's certain ways to, you know, say, oh, here's an expense here, and we have to pay this out of the bill. But, yes, right. You know. Yeah, there's so, yeah, it's always some sort of manner. And, you, you, you yeah, have, I mean, you look at the interest rate, look at Justin Bieber right now. I mean, that wonderful, that kid that just came from nothing, his mother puts him on YouTube from Canada, he gets this incredible opportunity, and, you know, and he sort of seems, seems to be, you know, yes. not handling the fan very well. Right. You know, they, they arrested him yesterday. I mean, they came to his house yesterday with, you know, the egging at this house, and, you know, and, and, his, and they say his mother is in the house with him. I'm uh-huh. thinking, Really? Really? Yeah, no. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to tell a kid when they're making multi millions of dollars and, support, and you know, supporting you. It's hard to tell them no. Yeah, you're right, when, when they're the breadwinner and they can call the exactly. r- shots. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. You know, it's, I certainly find it interesting. I, just, I find it just to be the thing very sad. Yeah. You know? you're right, and, right. And I, sure, I sure like his music. And, you know, I thought, well, wow, this is great. And then to watch this sort of happen is. is it's like watching a train wreck, and, and I know a lot of the kids have gone through, through this. And I mean, I think he's 19 or something like that now. So, I mean, certainly it's of age. Yes. But, but this started, you know, before. Right, right. I think, you, bought, I think he bought his first car before he had his driver's license. And <laughs> all, all those kind of things that, you know, normally a kid wouldn't have access to or be allowed to do, you know. People right. stand around while you're spray painting a wall. Right, yeah, throwing eggs at someone's house or what have you. Yeah, well, and we'll see how that one plays out. But, you know, but I've seen this—I've seen this pattern so many times with, with child stars, and right. Um, and I just—I—I I, I hope that I hope he gets a grip. Right, because you know I wanted to ask you a question. You know, as, as we're talking here, my mind's kind of filling with these questions. You—you—you haven't—you have, an, you have an, an interesting perspective because you know you're still in the industry. You—you you know you're still very successful in what you're doing because we look at certain stars who who grow up as children, you know, they're actually our children, you know, under 10, and by their teens or early 20s, they kind of fade out. And then you have people uh, who were more in their late teens, 20s, who continue on. One of the person, uh, a person that stood out of my mind was uh, Elvis Presley. You know, he was touring since he was eight, uh, in his early, late teens. And then he transitioned and went, you know, went on. He had his own problems, but he actually transitioned to adulthood. Do you think there's an age gap there? If you start a little older, your likelihood of succeeding or continuing on your career is greater than if you start younger? Oh, I, I think definitely. First of all, when you're a kid, you have an entirely different look than you do as a young adult. Right. And that sometimes when the kids grow up, they, that look doesn't translate you know, to, to something that, that, that's viable in the market. Right. You may be as cute and short and pudgy. As a kid, everybody thought, oh, you're the best kid in the world. And now you're just old. Yes. Balding, punchy, short. <laughs> you know? Right. But, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely find that does. I mean, I think that, that it's, it's much, I mean, you, you think about the, 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 there's a certain number of kids like Liz Taylor and Debbie Reynolds were able to transition to yes. adult stars. Nice, yes. You know, Jodie Foster, who actually at one point was supposed to, was asked, was given the part of Holly, was offered the part of Holly in Land of the Lost, and this is a child that was able to transition into adulthood. And those are, I think, a lot, a lot rarer than the ones that, that can. I mean, it's, yes. a, it's, a, it's a rare story for somebody as a child, I think, right. to make it into the adult world. Because, because I, I find it fascinating, like, w- one of the actors that always stands out to me is Kurt Russell. You, you see you, yes. you see him in all his Disney movies, and I and I realize that, I remember, you know, I, I still have all his collection of all those Disney movies, especially when he's a robot. You see, one of, yes. one of the robot movies he did was, I, I think he was in college, but it was 1975. And in 1980, he went on and did Escape from New York. And now, you know, he's the adult Kurt Russell. So, I, I, you know, I find, it, I find that very fascinating. You know, when you look at, you know, child um, stars like that who are able to transition, do you think, you think it's the industry that calls for their, for their type of character or their professional? You know, is there something a little extra, like you mentioned Debbie Reynolds, uh, even Elizabeth Taylor? You know, they went from these childhood uh, actors, but they seem to have, I don't know, uh, a little more acting experience, do you think? Is there something, or is it just maybe, you know, the luck of the draw, and they were the ones that, uh, you know, made it? I think the luck of the draw. Okay. I mean, look, at, look at the guy, you, you talk about the guy who played Screech. Yes. He had an incredible run on Saved by the Bell. Yes, Dustin and, Diamond. And the adult, you know, he 
you know, if he's tap cast, I mean, you, you think of him as Screech. And you see yes. him under the show, you all you see is Screech. Right. That's the problem with a lot of actors that become tap cast. Right. Um, Especially when they're young. Cool. Doesn't mean he's not a great actor. Doesn't mean any of those things. It's just It's just that nobody's finding a place for him. Nobody's willing to write the check and hire him. Right, because I remember seeing him as a don't. I think he looks the same, and uh, he he had a beard. I just thought, well, he doesn't look, you know, know. He, he looks well, fine. You know, my, my my book, The Red Wings of Christmas, the illustrator is Ron Perillo, who played Horseshack on Welcome Back, Cotter. Oh yes. Ron, Ron passed away about a year ago. Right. Um, and you know, he was Horseshack for his entire life. Right. Yes. Uh, it, so it's, it's, it's tough. Now, all these guys go into directing these. I remember in the old days, uh, in Tiger Beat, we used to actually be like Tiger Beat 16 magazine. There was a whole bunch of us that h- kind of hung out together. I remember like Sean Cassidy or Lace Derrick would come over to my house for swimming and stuff like that. This was before Sean was famous. His brother, David, was, David Cassidy was doing lots of big things. He was a big star and all that stuff. But this is, Sean was just, you know, this pimply faced kid um, and would come over. Um, and, you know, and, 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 and and so, and so now Sean is, you know, now Sean is a big director. Lake, of course, when you have a musical talent, that, that can transcend fast like Elvis. Because, the, you know, you can, you can grow with the music, hopefully. And you can still maybe find an audience. Um, so, uh, but, but, you know, it, 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 it's interesting to watch the progression. But I think a lot, a lot of the kids go, you know, either go to another business yes. or they become directors or they do something behind the scenes. Right, you know that, that that's fascinating that you, you know you bring up you know David Cassidy, Sean Cassidy, because you know, you know David Cassidy, you know huge from the uh, Partridge Family, and I remember uh, Sean Cassidy from the Hardy Boys, exactly with, with Parker Stevens, and he, he he had a musical career and everything. Do you, and do you think when they cross over like that in the early years, like uh, Sean and uh, David, you know where they sing and they act? Do you think that helps or hurts when when they're younger like that? Like maybe they haven't chosen a a specific career path. You know, I, you know it's who are we to judge? I have no idea. You right. know, it's, it's I think it's the it's the luck of the draw. It's David, David, it's hard for David Cassidy not to be David Cassidy for yes. the longest time. People would hire him. They, you know, everybody would see David Cassidy in this part. They wouldn't see the act, the, the character he's supposed to portray. Right. But you know, maybe he didn't get the right roles or whatever. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a crapshoot. Right. And, you know, if you, you should get lucky enough to get an adult role. Yes. As you transition, then you then you're watched. If you can do, we'll get transferred from child and get that one young adult adult role that's really good, then people suddenly see you as that adult as opposed to that child. Right. Right. But but that's, just, that's just me pontificating. Yeah. <laughs> like you know. <laughs> uh, but I, but I, I, I've had the privilege of being up close with a lot, of, a lot of child stars, yes. and watching that journey sort of at a distance. Right, right. Um, which, which, so. which is, I think, I think, perfect. Uh, you know, for um, especially the the business we're in right now, because right, because you know, who, who's that casting director or that uh, that person that says, well, you know, there's there's that uh, robot kid from Disney who I think will be a great Snake Plissken. You know, let's give him a shot. You know, it's yeah. fascinating. I guess you. you yeah, go ahead. Well, of course, the, the two best Disney is, is, you know, is Justin Timberlake and, and uh, oh, God, what's his face? Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't, my mind just went blank. I understand. Uh, who is that? Oh, uh, 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 Goslin, that guy? No, you know, what's the, what's the girl singer? Uh, 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 Britney Spears. Oh, like, Britney Spears, right. They were both on Masketeers on the show. Right. At Disney, and talking about, talking about huge crossovers. And Justin, I mean, come on, Justin is, is becoming extraordinary. He's so funny. I mean, Saturday Night Live is my favorite. When I mean, he's on Saturday Night Live, I love it. <laughs> I, I, I do have to admit, when I watch him and uh, uh, Fallon do the um, the Bee Gees, it's one of the best segments. Oh, my God. <laughs> the best. <laughs> the best. That's right. Hey, Wesley, i got to take a quick break. But, uh, you know, enjoying you being on the show immensely. You know, thank you for, uh, you know, taking the time. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Hey, well, this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to the intro. And we have in-studio guest Mr. Wesley Yor, who's been giving us some great insight from his long career in Hollywood. And we still have one more segment to get some more pearls of wisdom from him. So you hang in there. We'll be right back. And this is the intro. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. Good to be back with you today. That's right. We have a great in studio guest, Mr. Wesley Yor. We've been having a great conversation with him. 
I want to give out a quick shout out to Mr. Steve Schneikert. You are great friends, and we know we have a great friendship for a long time here with the In Show. And Wesley, I've just been having a blast. I mean, just taking me back and all the wonderful insight. I know you have a, a lot of upcoming projects. I don't know if there's anything you can share with us. Well, uh, yeah, we've got a couple of TV shows we're developing, and, and I just produced, I just opened a new musical uh, called Snapshot. And it's, uh, it's Stephen Schwartz's new musical. He, Stephen wrote one of the songs that Godspell. Yes. And we've been, we've been workshopping this show for 15 years. So we were just in Connecticut at the Good Speed Opera House and just closed. It looks like finally we're going to start going on tour. So if you see snapshots, like the camera, it's a brilliant new musical by by famous Stephen Schwartz. Fantastic. So, is, there, is there a website? Can we get uh, some links from uh, your page? Anything like that out there? Well, it, it's really not. We don't have a website up yet. Uh, we've been just keeping it kind of under the radar. But gotcha. it'll be up soon. You can go to my Facebook, which is just, it's Facebook, Wesley Ure, E-U-R-E, like Eureka. And... Uh, Fantastic. Um, and I, what else am I doing? Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what sounds, uh, you know, just from talking to you, you, that your life is just on the fast lane. It's just going, going, going. So are, are you personally going to be doing any uh, acting and any of these well, projects? I, 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 just, I, just, I just did two movies. Fantastic. I um, have a movie that just came out. It's, it's in the theaters now. It's, got, it's on... Uh, get it on the DVD on the 11th, I think, of October, but it's on the, on demand, on Netflix and stuff. It's called The Geography Club. Scott Bakula is in it, and I play a geography teacher. It's, uh, it just won a whole bunch of awards. Um, Entertainment Tonight was calling it one of the most important movies to see of the year, and it's, it's about a gay straight alliance in a high school, about a, a hidden gay, a secret gay club, and, and what happens in this high school. And then I just finished a new movie with Ali Sheedy called Sins of Our Youth. We just finished shooting in Vegas, and I played the police chief of this murder mystery. Okay, and, and that's uh, on demand as well, or is that coming out still? No, that, they're editing that one. That one will be out at, by the summer, I believe. Okay. But Geography Club comes out now. You can go take a look at it. Now, Geography Club, but you believe you miss me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, three times. i, I got to tell you a story. Okay, yeah, please. I, I had this, this, this guy that writes columns and, and has been following my career for a long time. I go to the private screening uh, of Geography Club in Los Angeles. And we're there, and, you know, at the end of the movie, he comes, this guy comes running up. I've never met him before. Yes. He comes running up to me and says, Wesley, 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 I saw your name in the credits. I didn't know you were in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was. Did, did you blink? <laughs> yeah, so I would like to dispel every notion you've ever heard. There are small parts. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> but, but, but I'm, I'm... I laughed so hard. That's fantastic. <laughs> I just thought that was the funniest thing. I saw your name in the credits. I didn't know you were in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, i got to go back and watch the movie so I can see. So I can see. <laughs> so, so when the movie comes out, you, you, you can time stamp it. I'm here at <laughs> yeah. 30 to 31. Yeah, I, A signed autograph poster of. <laughs> exactly. Got to sound like we got through my days hosting Finders Keepers for Nickelodeon at game show. The kids did, and uh, you know it was. I mean, all I ever did on that show was to tell the kids, "All right, go find it." We hid <laughs> objects in different rooms, and they had sixty seconds to trash the room and find the hidden object. Nice. Um, nice. But, uh, <laughs> but I got to tell you, it was so much fun playing a police chief. Yeah. You know, I've never done that. And I had the gun. I had the whole. I had the whole rigmarole. We were out in the rain and police cars and coming onto a crime scene and screeching in and pulling guns and firing. I never really, you know, being an actor can be so much fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Did, did it just seem natural for you to play this, you know, authority figure with a gun? It felt great, to be honest. You know, I, I, I stayed away from acting for a long time. Okay. And I mostly did writing and producing and stuff. I had my books out and right. and things like that. But, um, so I, I took a hiatus and then I got a call to, to do these roles. I didn't actually, 
you know, I got calls from people that were producing, said, hey, would you select? And I said, sure. <laughs> you crazy? <laughs> and, uh, and it was kind of, it was being back on the set, because I've been a producer now for so long, and a writer, I've been on the other side of the camera, and so I'm busy collecting, finding the money, or writing, or doing this, getting everything ready so the actors can walk in. Acting is the easiest job in the world. <laughs> right. so, it, is, it is. I mean, come on, everybody, everything's done by the time you get there. I mean, they, they may have, They've probably been working on that script for five years. They had to raise, you know, a million and a half dollars to do it. And, and suddenly, you know, you get to walk in, they have the costume person, the makeup person, person you walk into your lives and you go home. Right. And that's it. <laughs> and, and you're done. I, I, think, I think they said, I think somebody said it really well, it says, anybody can act. It says, look at Shirley Temple, she was five years old. <laughs> 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 Anyone can, uh, you, what? Yeah, that, that, that's kind of a high, a high measuring stick there. She was pretty good. She was, she was, she, she was amazing. <laughs> uh, that, that's a, that's an amazing child star. Speaking of child stars, that went on to do something wonderful in her life. Yeah, she, she, she yeah, she was, she, she started a, a, a foundation or two. Am I correct? And was she a head of yeah. a foundation as well? well yes, yeah, she, she was. I forgot which, which country she was the ambassador for in the United States. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's wonderful how, you know, if you stay on a certain track, different doors may open, but, you you, you know, who you are still shines through. Exactly. You know, that's... Exactly. To this day, I, mean, I haven't seen a Heidi movie in so long. I would love to go see a Heidi movie again. A Heidi? <laughs> Heidi. Yeah. The other, the other night in Hollywood, it was in, in, in Sunset Boulevard, there's a club. And they have horrible movie nights. Okay, nice. And, and what they do is they sell tickets and they have a guest comic and this pick the movie and then they air it for the you know, for paid audience. Yes. And um, and a few weeks ago I got a call that Bobcat Goldthwait, the comic. Yes, yes. And, Ro and, and Robin Williams. Yes. They pick they put pick the movie I started in called Chomps. I and love Chomps. Larry Bertinelli, Red Buttons, Jim Backus, Hermione Badley, Conrad Bain. And it's, it's like a Disney movie. It was Hannah Barbera. Well, they, they wanted to screen the movie. They said, Wesley, we're doing a horrible movie night. Will you come? I said, oh. are you crazy? Of course I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Jumps, and it was about that. the movie, people yell out funny lines and That's talk great. the movie. And it was, I had so much fun that night. And, and, and uh, Bobcat Goldthwait was amazing uh, and funny. And then they get prizes at the end of the, to the night to the people that yelled out the best lines. It was just <laughs> <laughs> but, I had, but sitting back, I know I haven't seen the movie screened in, you know, in front of people in years. Right. And now I'm watching this movie, everybody's laughing and howling. And, and, and even Bobby, it's not, cause it's not a bad movie. Right. It's just, it was one he liked as a kid. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I, 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 it's like a Disney film. I invented a mechanical watchdog that has superpowers and Yes. And Valerie's my girlfriend. And I had the privilege of giving Valerie her first screen kiss. Uh, wow, look at that. So, but, it was, it was nice. It was nice. That was the prettiest girl I had ever seen in my life. She's she's very amazing. I saw her not too long ago at um, the Ultimate Woman's Expo. I was like the only man there, so you know it was very popular. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she she gave a she gave a talk and you know met her afterwards and she you know just as bubbly and friendly and lovely as you know I remember her from the past. Exactly. Well, that's a. That's Okay. Uh, right. You know, who, who played her sister on One Day at a Time? And, yes. And as we know, Bonnie Franklin, who was a dear friend of one of my best friends, she passed away this year. Yes. Um, and uh, so they're talking, talking about Chopper that didn't, didn't move on to another, an, to an adult role. I mean, come on, Valerie is just amazing. Right. Right. You know, and, and, and it's interesting. You know, the, the different paths. You know, you can track. You know, just that show alone. You know, the different paths uh, they take. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's uh, you know, it's you know, it's it's many things when you see the gamut of where some childhood stars go, and you know where you know others head towards. And unfortunately, it looks like the vast majority kind of lose sight. Do you think you know? I don't want to get uh, you know too serious, but you know, we only got a few more minutes. Just you know, just from your perspective, what are some steps, maybe? For even adult 
uh, child stars, and but especially for the child stars of today, uh, you know, what kind of advice would you give them? Is there a perspective that they might hang on to? You know, when when the lights go off and you know they are no longer the center of attention, hang on to family, friends. Is there you know you know older child stars who have gone through this? Is what what would you tell them right now? If uh, you know. By the time they get to me, it's too late. Yeah. So hang on to your money. But the, the people that I would be talking to your parents, right. your agents, oh, nice. say, hey, you, this is, you've got a huge job yeah. ahead of you. And, <laughs> and just remember, if you always, cause imagine you're, it, it's all over, you've got money in the bank, you're sitting around doing nothing, you, can't, you don't want to reward, you can't work at McDonald's because you think everybody's going to recognize you and you know, put you down and stuff like that. Right. And, um, uh, it's a, it's a tough thing. Yeah. I, 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 there's a famous, famous songwriter that I won't mention her name. Uh, she came to one day. She came to me, and I, I won't use the actor's real name. She says um, it's a fake name. She says, "Did you hear about Tom Kenley?" Yeah. And Tom, he, it's a big, a big, famous actor named Tom Kenley. It's not. I'm just, I'm just making this up. Right. Says, Did you hear about Tom Kenley? I go, no. I go, what happened? What happened? She said, oh, it's terrible. It's horrible. I said, what is it? She said, Wesley, it's the worst thing. I said, was he diagnosed with AIDS? Yeah. She said, no, worse. He's working at a submarine shop. <laughs> I, bu- I, I bought go, a what? sign. I bought He's a making sign. making sandwiches. Wesley, I go, are you kidding me? You're saying this is the worst thing in the world? And to her, it was. Yes. She lives in the Beverly Hills world. She lives in the startup world. And this there was an actor that had had a, a huge career in the soap operas and was now working, you know, doing a regular nine to five job, and it was the worst thing ever. Right, right. They're 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 comp- beyond out of the spotlight. They're just out of the world. It is so hard making up names when you're trying to hide people. Like yeah. this, I gotta tell you. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just because now, now everyone's going to be look, going to the nearby subway uh, or uh, sandwich shop. Let's go. Let's go. I'm, gl- <laughs> I'm glad you changed everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wesley, I, I've been having a you know a, a fantastic time. You 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 are so full of energy. Uh, you know your your stories, your advice is wonderful. You know, and I'm and I'm thankful that uh, you you came on the show because I know there are a lot of people that you know are in different stages in the careers who, who listen to the show and I always try to bring on you know people who have you know something to say and I'm so glad that you are you know are, are out there and are uh, an advocate and you know and just speak to you know people from the heart and speak from your experience and you know thank you so much for you know sharing with us here on the show thanks for asking me Gus I really appreciate it and you know I got to talk about my favorite subject you <laughs> nice, nice. You know, we 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 just got you know just a little bit left. Uh, I do want to ask you how how would you like to end the show with uh, with uh, your wonderful theme song since you're the one that sang it. How, how, how about we end it with the, the closing theme song? Oh, beautiful! Which I also, which I also sang on it. Oh, did you? Oh, perfect. That that, that fits in just great. Yeah, please. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm a trained professional here. I, I, I need warm up. I need, I need my blue M&Ms, and I need Perrier chill to uh, 63 degrees. You know. I'll, I'll, I'll get Steve uh, right on that. Are you, re- are you ready for the closing of season? Which was my favorite, by the way, my favorite uh, part of the show. That, 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 I love the opening, but I love the closing better. Fantastic. I'm ready for it. Really? Okay. So okay. after when I look all around. I can't believe the things I've found. Now I need to find my way. I've lost, I've lost, following me. Living in the land of the lost, 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 lost. Living in the land of the lost. That was it. Beautiful. I love it. (laughs) I love it. Way to go. What a great way to end the show. Wesley, again, thank you for being on. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for watching, Oh, you're welcome. You bet. Hey, and this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to The In Show. And we had 
in studio guest mr wesley Yore, and thanking him again for his wonderful insight and his just his wonderful humor and everything is and he does of course you know look for him on his facebook page that's wesley Yore e u r e and you'll be able to find him there and look for all his upcoming projects of course visit us at the show.com where you'll be able to hear this um radio show and so much more that we have doing and done of course visit us on facebook twitter youtube and all those great social media sites and of course ladies and gentlemen gus has left the building <laughs>